all right and welcome back it is time it is time for the thumper tips and tricks this is really the only thing i think i have left to cover in uh in multiplayer we've pretty much made a video on just about everything i didn't really go in detail with a ton of stuff but uh the thumper is the one thing people have been requesting a ton i did make a general tips and uh tricks on rocket launchers that did cover just about everything you need to know However, the Thumper differs from the the Sigma and the uh, the RPG in a few separate ways. So I'll be linking in the description all of my other guides if uh, you have any other issues with any other camo in Black Ops Cold War. Uh, at this point, I pretty much got a guide for all of them. This is going to be our capping up and probably one of our more requested one is the Thumper long shots and the kills behind cover with the Thumper. Also going to leave a link to the Discord in the description if you're looking for some people to play with, play some multiplayer with, and grind out and get these Thumper camos together. Definitely check that out. Tons of awesome people looking to play multiplayer, zombies, all that good stuff in there. So starting off, before we go into the camo requirements, I do want to say probably the single best way to go about this is if you like zombies, I would go ahead, go into zombies, get this level 30, get all of the stuff you need for it done, and then hop into multiplayer because unlike the bullet weapons and the primary weapons where the main strat is you want to go into multiplayer get them to like 20 30 and then go into zombies uh secondaries are a little bit different these only have 30 levels you can max them out in one game of zombies if you use a double xp token and the thumper is very much that uh, i would probably train around spawn or in the pack a punch area or if you if you're comfortable and you've got people to the top of nox track essentially play a game of zombies get the thumber to level 30 that way it's maxed out and you have all of the challenges ready to go because some of the last challenges are the ones that's going to take you a while and you don't really need to worry about any of the earlier ones because you're going to unlock those while you're doing the last one so the most efficient way especially if you plan on getting both these final camos is definitely try to level this up in zombies if you don't like zombies and you don't plan on getting dark ether obviously you can still level this up in a uh, multiplayer uh definitely double xp tokens for it and trust me, the best way to level up is probably going to be hardcore nuketown with this. So starting off, the very first challenge requirement is kill 30 enemies in multiplayer. Don't even worry about this. Uh, you're going to have to do way more than this by doing the other challenges. So this one, don't even need to even look at it for a second. Now, the challenge number two is the long shot medals. And this is one that people ask me about a lot. This is one of the harder challenges uh, for the thumper here. And it's really not that hard. Uh, I would pretty much recommend getting all 50 of these on Hardcore Newtown. I'm gonna show you some spots here. And essentially what you kinda wanna do is from the back of your spawn on Newtown, just kinda spam in their spawn uh, shots every so often. Now you can use the ammo crate and you can sit in the back of the map and just continuously spam shots. However, the way we did this when we are going for the Thumper Gold, you're probably working on other weapons uh, unless this is your last weapon. And kind of the best thing to do is spawn in, shoot two Thumper shots, run out of your ammo, kind of hope to get those long shots. If you don't, then go proceed with your main weapon, work on the challenges for your main weapon till you die, respawn and shoot two more Thumper shots. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you gameplay of the long shots that I got with the Thumpers and these are the angles that I would use if you're going for this. So essentially just kind of watch what I'm using in this gameplay. We'll go in game as well, and I'll show you these specific spots as well. But uh, definitely check the gameplay that I've got playing in the background. Just kind of watch these angles I'm shooting because these are some of the better angles. One thing that I would note is kind of watch how your enemies are playing. Essentially, some of these spots aren't going to work in every game you play because some of the spots you want to shoot these at are kind of dependent on the enemy play style. So if a spot is working for you that game, continuously shooting that spot and keep doing that. That way you can kind of maximize your efficiency with this. And there are just some lobbies while you're going for this that you're not gonna be able to do it in. If the entire enemy team is running Flak Jacket, honestly, that game is pretty much a locked cause. I know you're still gonna be able to get some of the challenges requirements done, but especially the long shots where you're gonna need to hit the enemy more than once, if all six players are running flak jacket, you might as well just find a new lobby or work on a different challenge. Don't try to progress on this. If you keep getting these shots at long ranges and you're just getting the flak jacket hit marker, flak jacket hit marker, because you can sit and waste all your time there and it's just gonna be wasted time. Work on something else or leave the lobby, find a new one and try to find that lobby without people with flak jacket. That's one of the most annoying things you're gonna run into and it's unfortunate, but it is going to happen. I am gonna show the long shot spots, but I'm gonna wait till we go a little bit farther down when we get to the kills behind cover, because we're gonna cover those all at one time. So let's read the rest of the requirements and then I'm gonna go in game and show you the spots that I would use. 
Now the third set of challenges is get two kills without dying 20 times coming from the thumper. This challenge used to be three kills without dying. It got nerfed. It is now two. Shouldn't be that hard. Uh, you can kill someone with flak jacket and punching people does count now. Uh, so all you got to do is get one guy. Uh, hopefully you can get two guys without flak jacket in one life. But this one shouldn't be too hard. Get one guy, camp, sit back, and just hopefully you can find a guy without flak jacket or hit two shots on a dude with it or potentially punch someone. The geometric challenge. For this is really easy. You'll get this over time as you're going for it. If you run engineer, all you gotta do is look out for enemy landmines, the portable radars, uh, trophy systems. You can't really actually get those because obviously it's gonna stop your uh, thumper bullet. But trust me, there's tons and tons of landmines that people use on Nuketown. Uh, and just all that other stuff you'll see on the ground. So just keep an eye out for all of that and just kind of spam it as soon as you see it. All right, now we're on the shoot and kill 50 enemies taking cover from you in multiplayer. So essentially you gotta kill enemies behind cover like you do with the ARs. And this is another challenge I get so many questions about. So we're gonna hop in game and I'm gonna show you specifically the spots I'd use for this. But like I said, I've had gameplay rolling in the background here and there. Kind of watch the spots that I've had in the gameplay rolling. But uh, let's go ahead and hop in game and show you the exact spots I'm talking about. All right, and here we are on Nuketown. And I'm only going to show this map because my strat would pretty much be to just run hardcore Nuketown 24-7. Uh, there are a few maps that it's actually better on. Checkmate's a really good map for this. The only issue is you can't reliably play Checkmate 24-7. You can guarantee yourself to play Nuketown game after game because of that 24-7 Nuketown playlist. And it doesn't look like that playlist is going anywhere. It's pretty much been in the game since they've relaunched Nuketown. I know they took it away for a small period of time, but it pretty much came right back after that. So what you're going to be looking out for, you definitely want to try to be playing Hardpoint or Domination because these are the objective game modes and people like to go around the objective. So that's going to be kind of important here. So I'm just going to kind of show you the spots that I use. So this spot right here, Hardcore Nuketown, there's tons of people who sit in that line of sight right back there behind the door and they're trying to get long shots. They're going to be looking your way, so you have to be careful. But this right here will be a long shot. And if they're far enough behind the door, it's also going to be a kill behind cover. So that's an amazing spot right there. Also, window to window. This is going to be a long shot if you're back far enough. It's also going to be a kill behind cover. Kills behind cover are a lot easier now since they don't directly have to be looking at you and not near as much of their body has to be covered as before. Obviously, you can hit the same dude from over here in this spot as well and just spamming it kind of over here. This spot works as long as they don't have any spawn protection back in here. But I mean, it really just revolves around spamming it a lot on Nuketown. Now on this side, you can do the same thing in reverse. You can still obviously hit the person over there. It's a little bit harder to kind of thread it through here. So this one might not be a huge, so this one might not be a great option for you if you're not able to hit your shots as well. But the uh, tower to tower still works perfectly fine. And depending on the type of lobby you're in, this top of tower would be pretty great for a lot of different long shot potential up here. Uh, obviously, if the enemy teams knows what they're doing, they're gonna be taking you out of that spot fairly rapidly. Uh, and whatnot and another spot that I found a lot I use this spot quite a bit because especially if it's hard pointer domination they're gonna be running from that spawn towards here and I got quite a few of them just kind of spamming this spot right here getting them as they're running through here and those right there were just a few of the spots there's tons more spots on Nuketown uh, we actually didn't grind our long shots on Nuketown uh, for this account because it wasn't in the game when we got it. I wish it was. It definitely would have speeded up the time, especially for these kills behind cover and the long shots. Uh, I was getting, just right there, testing that out, I was getting over five plus per game, and I wasn't even just going for it. I was essentially just shooting two shots with the thumper, switching to my red gun, continuing on, but I was getting five plus kills behind cover and long shots per game, just kind of messing around with it with my first few games. So this should be something to be able to complete in 10 games just while working on other weapons and whatnot. Obviously, it might vary a little bit depending on the lobby you're in. You might get more or less depending on, you know, skill-based matchmaking and whatnot, just how it is with this game. But yeah, with that, we're actually not done yet. Uh, those aren't even the hardest challenges for that. You move into the destroy three score streak or enemy vehicles in a single game 10 times. This one uh, is very annoying. Uh, I did cover it in my other video. We'll kind of gloss over it real quick, but I went in quite a bit of a more depth uh, guide with my other rocket launcher tips. Now with this, you really have two options and depending on your play style, one might work better for you and one might not. Uh, for me, I definitely found benefits from both options. There's definitely not a clear winner over the other. So starting off, you have the combined arms, the 12v12 game modes in that you definitely wanna be playing the ones where there's one kind of central point and whatnot. Uh, so you got to destroy uh, three 
score streaks are vehicles in a single game it's obviously easier to get the uh the vehicles but the score streaks aren't impossible with the thumper so for the 12v12 game mode you're really looking for the crossroads map and you're looking for the amada map uh with the uh, snow map you're looking to destroy tanks which are going to be a little bit harder because it's going to take quite a few bullets and you might want to weaken them with an lmg with one of the barrels that do extra vehicle damage and then finish it off with a thumper uh, but you're going to have a lot of teammates stealing your tank kills with that. Uh, the snowmobiles are definitely the way to go. You want to be running engineer, kind of looking for these red vehicles across the map, getting the snowmobiles counts, and then uh, all of the boats count in uh, a Mata Strike. And obviously, when the now for both of these modes, the starting of the, uh, the map is always going to be the best. That's when the most amount of people are going to be on vehicles and other things. So it's when you have the best opportunity. So hopefully you can get one or two of them really quick when the game starts off. You're going to have tons of people and jet skis, boats, all of the different things that these maps spawn in with. Uh, the boat map, I definitely feel like I see more people using boats later on into the game, whereas with Crossroads, uh, I feel like after a certain point in the game, people just stop using uh, the snowmobiles and whatnot, but it's still not impossible. This mode is going to be quicker for you because you're not able to back out of the game. You've got to play the entire length for this to count, and it's going to mess up if you back out. So the 12v12 mode is going to be quicker. The games are going to end quicker, but I think you have less opportunity to get it. So if you can reliably get all three of these in each and every game you play, your best bet's probably going to be the 12 and 12 mode. However, Dirty Bomb obviously lasts quite a bit longer and almost every game of Dirty Bomb, you're going to be able to get these three. It's just going to be overall take a longer amount of time because Dirty Bomb games do last longer. For Dirty Bomb, you're going to want to spawn in, have Engineer on, and kind of just slowly shoot down with the parachute, looking for the little red vehicles on the map, and then obviously try to land near the vehicle or shoot them out of the sky and whatnot. On Dirty Bomb, it is 100% possible to destroy kill streaks with these two. So essentially, uh, if you're not seeing any vehicles, no easy vehicle kills, what you want to do is parachute down. You want to try to find a helicopter and just shoot the helicopter with a thumper. It's going to take a few shots, so I'd parachute down, hit it with a thumper bullet, fall to my death, and then rinse and repeat until you destroy it. This is once again going to be annoying because teammates are going to steal it. I Teammates just love to see a chopper with one health left shoot two bullets into it, get that easy to destroy streak, and it doesn't count for you. But um, yeah, those are the two modes for this. This to me is probably the harder uh, challenge here just because you really gotta find vehicles and it's really dependent on enemy play style with that. Uh, so if you're struggling in the 12v12 mode and you're not getting those three score streaks and uh, vehicles consistently, try Dirty Bomb. Games are gonna last longer, but uh, you should be able to chunk away at this challenge. This is the challenge that I, I think is the most annoying for this. Uh, and all I can say is uh, good luck. The rocket launchers uh, getting gold in this game are just very, very annoying. And then move on to the very last challenge. Kill two or more enemies rapidly 25 times. This challenge is the hardest challenge for the Sigma, but for the Thumper and the RPG, it's really not too bad. Obviously, once again, hardcore Nuketown. You just got to get a little bit of luck. You got to hopefully find some people not running Flak Jacket. But even if they are, it is still 100% possible. If you shoot them and they got Flak Jacket on, just try to reload and shoot another shot or punch them. And you just got to get that 25 times. I think for the most part, what you're going to be struggling with is this and maybe the long shots, depending on the lobbies you get in. But uh, this to me is probably the biggest um, thumper challenge to get past. But yeah, that is really going to be it for this video, guys. That's going to kind of conclude all of our tips and tricks for the uh, DM Ultra grind. If you guys have anything else uh, that could help someone get this, anything I didn't cover that helped you with your uh, thumper gold, definitely leave it in the comments. That way if people are looking for additional help. They can find it down below with your comment, boys. But yeah, with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Anyone who watched all the way to the end of this, I have no idea how long this is gonna end up being. Thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time.